Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to say a couple of things after the talk, but now I give you Michael and uh, Radek for Motion House, and we're really excited. Let's go. Thank you, thank you. Hi, we're really excited to be here. This is for us, as uh, people from Czech Republic, this has been on an international conference in different countries, so thanks a lot for uh, inviting us. My name is Radek. Uh, can you hear me well? Should I put it closer? Okay. My name is Radek. I'm a co-founder of uh, Motion House, and I'm here with our creative director, Michael. And uh, uh, we came uh, from Brno, uh, where is our office based. By the way, we are hiring, so if you like what we do, please reach us. And if you want to move to Brno, which is also a beautiful city, you're welcome. Uh, uh, we will show you today uh, 10 years of Motion House, which is a creative studio for motion design. And by creative, I mean we mostly do projects starting with script, then continue with storyboards, animatics, 2D, 3D, and ending with sound design. So from the whole creative process, and mostly short commercial videos. To be fair, it's not 10 years, it's three and three quarters now, but we didn't want you to confuse our talks with VFX on Harry Potter, so we run, run it up to 10. And uh, we would like to show you what we have done in those almost 10 years, and also what we've learned. And uh, our kind of like a s uh, side theme to our talk will be about having fun, where Everybody says it, you know, fun is fun, but for us, looking back, fun is a really serious issue <laughs> because it's really what keeps our studio running uh, throughout all problems throughout the 10 years. And uh, as my favorite startup coach, who is from Germany, Bonnie Morlock says, nothing fucks up your company faster than running out of happiness. All right, so uh, we're always trying to add a little bit of something, you know, to our projects. And showreels, obviously, are uh, no different. I mean, you, uh, young artists or designers or whoever, uh, whoever you are, you basically, all the time, you want to do, you know, justice for the client. But, of course, you want to have fun and you have to, you want to bring a little more into it. So yeah, for us, showreels are no different, and uh, so let's begin our journey by showing you that uh, even with showreel, you can have some fun. The year is 2022. Marketing is everywhere. Static visuals are losing their power, and ad blocks are terrorizing the whole industry. But for Motion House, that's just another day at work. Get ready for another amazing video app starring your company. They say you cannot make a satisfying commercial. They were wrong. Your video. Ready PG, whatever you need. Thank you very much. But uh, let's back it up a bit, right? Because um, explainer videos, you know, explainer videos. So, 90s, 90s were crazy, right? I mean, you who lived in the 90s, I was born in the 90s, so I didn't, you know, get to live through uh, the stuff. But, you know, the crazy hairstyles, you know, parties, drugs, people are hustling, you know, making money however they can, however they could. And uh, for us, you know, kind of 90s were actually 2010s, you know, because we started in 2013 and the years that followed. And uh, a lot of startups, you know, and new apps, new technologies, you know, they were kind of on the rise. And everyone, everybody just wanted, you know, that explainer video showing what their product can really do. You know, and, you know, they didn't even care whether they need it. They just wanted to have one. So fast forward a couple of years, uh, everything we've done up to that point 
was basically only explaining videos. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I've learned from it is that uh, there are always people who have problems. You know, like, this is John, this is Thomas, this is Lisa. She owns a business, he's a single dad, and our product is here to help. And, uh, yeah, so it also has uh, a lot of scenes and uh, with mobile phones. And when I say a lot of, I mean a lot. <laughs> because each and every one of them basically had that one scene where you are showing that app. Yeah, they all want it there. And the uh, thing about working with startups uh, is that uh, like 90% of them usually don't last very much. So after a couple of years, our portfolio you know, looks kind of like this. And, um, but if you like zombie movies, uh, it's great because uh, you're gonna love this next showreel because it's full of uh, you know, companies that are not among us anymore. So, uh, but again, but again, we, with this showreel, we actually wanted to prove ourselves and prove people around us that uh, you don't need amazing visuals with epic orchestral dramatic music, and you just kind of have to, you know, have fun. So, this was the before. <laughs> 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 Don't, don't go to motionhouse.biz, we've canceled that website. Back then we wanted to do business, but now it's CZ. Uh, we, when we were doing these commercials, and it was almost hundreds of uh, explainer videos, it was a good lesson for us how to do a proper commercial, because you have the creative process uh, in place. And when we started, 10 years ago, we always approach it in a way that uh, we want to do something great studios do. And I, I'm sure everybody who got to, into design has something that you've seen somewhere and you just want that piece in your portfolio. You know, you want the, this like Apple commercial, black and white shapes, you know, and before even the client asks you what they want to do, you already know what you're gonna do. So we had this list of inspirations that we just wanted to fulfill and make it our, uh, make it our portfolio. And also we wanted every single video to, to be with potential to amaze uh, the viewers, to amaze, amaze the customers. But we've done it in a way that we've tried to put jokes in, put action scenes in, put fire in, and actually it turned out uh, almost every time that it was useless because if you just put extra stuff in the video it and it doesn't connect in any way with what the brand is trying to say then it doesn't work as a commercial the client doesn't the work, video doesn't work so we've learned lesson number one that instead of showing eye candy jokes and action we should amaze the audience by sh showing real uh, solution to their problem and make it in a way that is original, that can include jokes and explosions and fire and everything like that. And um, how to do it properly, how to, how to tackle the viewer in the perfect way. So before even starting the creative process, and this is something we do now with every single project that we start, it's really helpful to know four things be before you start writing or drawing. And first one is to know your audience. Are they old? Are they young? Are they interested in books, games? You know, uh, do they live here or over there? Do they speak Czech or German or is it Austrian? Is it German? Sorry, I don't. I don't want to go into it. Uh, so knowing your audience uh, gives you a hint on how you're going to approach those people, and uh, knowing them first before you start doing commercial is a great move. 
Second thing is know your key message. And this means that commercials can be overwhelming. You want to say that this phone has these apps, you know, it has this feature, these connectors. But when the video is over, you only remember so much. And it's good to know what is the key message that you want to deliver in the video and focus everything on that one thing. Third thing is to match the brand. So for example, if you would be doing something for Pixel Vienna, you know that they have this awesome design with this style of illustrations, they have their font, and these amazing characters with a pixel gender head. And you basically match it to, to continue in that style. So if somebody sees a poster then, here outside, they know that it's part of the same campaign and it's the same conference. So instead of what we did is to put the style we liked of our reference videos to the client's projects, then do it so it really resonates with the, uh, with, with the rest of the brand. And the last thing is to know the call to action, which means what do you want people to do after they finish watching the video? Should they call you, email you, buy the product, go here, go there, and again, focus on one thing and, and navigate the whole story towards that call to action at the end. So knowing the target audience, uh, knowing the key message, matching the brand, and calling to action are four things which help really a lot before starting writing the story, because then you basically have all the work done and you cannot be wrong when you continue the process. All right. Back to the uh, more interesting stuff. <laughs> no, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so I always knew that uh, staying in a 2D world won't be an option, you know, because there's only so much you can do with 2D and, uh, you know, not repeating yourself all the time. So I always knew that we have to move, you know, into the 3D space. And uh, even back in the day when we were producing those uh, 2D commercials and 2D uh, explainer videos, we were, you know, using that uh, 3D to kind of, you know, hel help ourselves, you know, to uh, make some bits and parts a bit easier to produce or just, to, you know, make the animation a bit more interesting to bring more depth into the, uh, into the uh, project. But, you know, it was still uh, kind of 2D, so I just wanted to do something a bit more real. So then I said, all right, let's do it. You know, let's create something, you know, that will be solely 3D. Let's do proper video, 3D, with lights, with textures and particles, because, boy, who doesn't love particles, right? And uh, so, uh, Slovakia company, Isidore, was at the time uh, producing, you know, which is a company, by the way, who produces uh, cycling apparels. And uh, at the time, they were producing uh, a cycling jersey that was made 100% out of recycled plastic. So I said, great, plastic, reflections, particles, yeah, let's do it. So uh, we've made a couple of concepts, you know, of working with those uh, plastic bottles that were kind of thrown away into the nature, you know, to work a bit with the colors of those jerseys. And, uh, you know, with almost zero knowledge in 2D, uh, in 3D, and with also zero, almost zero knowledge in 3D and with animation and uh, stuff in, in Cinema 4D, we just, you know, dive into it, had fun, and uh, tried to create something, you know, for free and uh, also meaningful. So uh, this is what came out of it, basically. So it was a kind of short video, you know, just, <laughs> thank you. This is just a short video, you know, to test out if we really can do this stuff and uh, hopefully we will get something out of it, which, you know, a couple of uh, years later, we've actually, based on that reference, we tried to, uh, we've managed to score more clients who wanted more 3D videos, which is great because, you know, we didn't want to, you know, obviously make explainers, uh, you know, uh, for the rest of our lives, you know, but it was 3D, but we didn't have those characters, you know, because back then when we were doing explainer videos, we were animating the hell out of characters all the time, you know, and you know how frustrating that can be if you 
you know, doing this kind of stuff. But we wanted to, you know, uh, get into it really even in the 3D space. So we were doing some uh, tests, you know, with our characters. This is supposed to be me wearing a Marty McFly jacket, playing with lightsabers, you know, that usual kid stuff. And um, uh, then we were trying to, uh, you know, do some some GIFs, you know, animated GIFs of people working out. And we, again, we had fun, and we decided, all right, let's make a short film about it, you know, just with those couple of animations. And uh, this is what came out of it again. COVID, you know. <laughs> back, back to the less interesting stuff. So <laughs> what we've learned here with uh, coming to 3D was, uh, I, I hope it's not so obvious for, for the rest of it, because it took me about 10 years to figure this out. So if, if it's obvious for you, I'm so jealous. But it was a thing where I always thought that it, if we will work hard, somebody will come and give us a bigger project. You know, like Steven Spielberg will call and say, all right, guys, you work so hard on these explainer videos, just Jurassic Park 7, here we go. And uh, it never happened, and we always were getting the same projects over and over again. And we always said, like, oh, maybe we can do a little bit reading. No, no, guys, I want, I want this one, what you've already done 15 times. And we realized that it actually works in the opposite way, that here's, here's a slide, that if you create something, that creates your portfolio, and that's what the clients want. You, you knew it already. <laughs> I, I, was, I was shooting uh, videos for agriculture company, Every time I came home from, from shooting like, like, like short videos about how they make dirt or something, you know, I was always like, I smelled like, like, like shit, you know, like after, I, I was doing for five years. I said like, when, when I'm going to do the better things, you know, and it never came. And then we really realized that if we want to start doing 3D or advance to something better, we first have to invest the time and create for our first 3D project alone. And that's when we've set the rule that 20% of the time in Motion House, we create our own projects where we push ourselves, create something in new styles, you know, do just something for our own or for some company that we like, but it's mostly for free or is it like a test project because it's a risk for them because they've never seen us do something like that. And the demand follows that we put it in our portfolio. Suddenly clients show up and say, okay, this is exactly what we want. And this worked for us before with the transition to 3D, with new styles, uh, new stuff that we do and everything. So we just keep doing it, keep just pushing our portfolio forward. And I think like if you have precious time at university or you have some free time and you can chase some passion project of yours, it really, really makes up the line of your clients in the future because people just work like in the supermarket. They just see, they just want it again, you know, and, but you have to be the one deciding what you want to do. All right, so uh, 2D, we've been there. 3D, we've been there. And uh, now we have 20% of free time to you know, spend however we like. So uh, you know, working on commercials or a year, that can be exhausting, right? So during holidays, we always try to have fun. You know, one year, we, uh, for example, uh, we're making this like kind of Zach King, uh, magic, video, video magic kind of kind of stuff because, you know, everybody loves these, I guess. And uh, by the way, that logo now is neon. That's where commercial world gets you. You can buy neon logo. And uh, and so, yeah, we uploaded that, you know, we had fun doing it, you know, people loved it, it was fine. So the next year we've decided uh, that, you know, we should do something more. And so we took a couple of uh, our uh, favorite uh, holiday movies, Czech ones, of course. I don't know if anybody 
is familiar with uh, any of these. I assume they are not dubbing that to uh, Austrian, uh, uh, but yeah, you never know, you have to ask. Uh, all right, and uh, we just wanted to show to the people, uh, to have, you know, we wanted to have fun with it, and to show people how would they probably look if they were filmed nowadays, when if clients were feedbacking them, actually. So I won't be showing the whole project because you know it's you know starring obviously a lot of Czech movies and you probably wouldn't be you know it wouldn't be probably as funny to you but you know at least this one bit I have to show. All right, yeah, so this is uh, just one bit of that thin thing. Uh, it whole has like, <laughs> thank you. It whole has like uh, one minute, and we just kind of posted it, you know, forgot about it for 10 minutes before it starts spreading, you know, because like in one hour it had like, uh, you know, our Facebook page had like, I don't know, 1,000 followers maybe, and we posted it there, and uh, like in one hour it had like 100 shares. And we were like, wow, that's, that, that, that's pretty cool. But suddenly, you know, every single minute a new share, you know, emerged. And uh, little did we know that in a couple of hours there was thousands and thousands and thousands of more shares. And uh, suddenly we, we, you know, realized that it became viral. You know, we didn't know where it started. We, know, we don't even know where it reached because, you know, up until... Up, la, la, la. <laughs> Still to this day, you know, people are actually sharing it, you know, it's like one or two times a month, but still, you know, it's a thing that it's old for almost four years. And the cool thing was it had like over, you know, with a million, millions of views and even appeared on our, our national late night show. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. They didn't show our logo, though, but yeah, you cannot have everything, I guess. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that was, a, that was a cool thing and we had fun again. All right, you know the drill. You know, you are at those family, you know, get togethers or the school reunions and everybody is asking you, so what do you do for a living? Or what are you doing? And you're like, oh yeah, I do uh, design and you're oh, working with computers, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you do? Oh, I do commercials and uh, oh, anything that I could see? And you know, you always try to introduce the big guns. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I've been working with for BMW and Microsoft and and stuff like that. And and oh, anything I might see on TV, of course, because TV is the relevance, right? And oh yeah, I say we do uh, the Pink Elephant. And by the way, uh, Pink Elephant is a sex shop. So. Uh, Essentially an online sex shop, yeah? So the question that always comes after this is, oh, do you have any discounts? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, because, yeah, working for BMW or, uh, or, or stuff like that, they don't want a car, they don't want just want a discount for a sex shop. So no matter how big the client is, everybody is basically amused by telling them you're you know, selling dildos. So yeah. Uh, but it, it looks, uh, it, it looks, it looks nice. It looks funny. We, you know, we're trying not to be dirty. Sorry about the sound. I forgot to turn it off. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that. That's our pink elephant. It actually airs uh, numerous times uh, of the, uh, during the year, and uh, everybody asks about it. So please, once and for all, we do not get discounts. All right. <laughs> Uh, so, and another thing that was uh, really cool and a really great project for us is that uh, since 2017 we started working for Avast, uh, which uh, I don't know if uh, in Austria is Avast a thing, you know, it's like this big cybersecurity company, and uh, I don't know, do you know Avast? Are you familiar? Some of you? Great. And uh, they uh, actually approached us, we were approached by uh, William Bluer, which is a uh, creative director for Avast. And, the, you know, he let us know that they are doing a redesign, a complete redesign of the brand, you know, and uh, they wanted us to do uh, the huge uh, rebrand, official branding video, which was great. We were so excited. Then they told us we have two months. We were less excited. But um, then they showed us the visual style and we were 
way less excited. Uh, not because it's you know bad, it's great because this uh, Italian illustrator Jonathan Kelge uh, is doing these amazing you know shapes and creating, bringing life to those characters. It's just so challenging. So we didn't know and absolutely didn't know how to how to approach it in such a short time because there are so many details in those kind of illustrations. So we just kind of try to explore some you know different stuff. Obviously, this did not really work. Yeah, could have been good, but no, 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 no emotions there. We tried to, uh, you know, combine it with 3D, but that didn't seem, you know, as a, as a possibility. We even tried some crazy stuff, you know, with some kind of wood planks, which was obviously a long shot, but, you know, you have to sell the client that you are doing more, uh, more and more concepts, even if they're useless. So, uh, <laughs> So you, and, and you just obviously want to have fun. And uh, so ultimately we decided that we uh, need to stay, you know, with something simple, you know, just, you know, working with those uh, illustrations because there are so many elements in there and we had so little time. We have to really, you know, animate every piece and every bit. So essentially we were combining those uh, shapes with 2D shapes and flat 2D. And then even we uh, began to uh, add there some 3D elements. Limited some. only by their imaginations. And as yeah. the online... Yeah, oh, I can mute it. Yeah. Right, so let's get back. All right. So yeah, we were combining 2D stuff. Limited only by their imaginations. And Thanks for the advice. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, all right, so yeah, we were uh, combining this stuff and eventually, you know, that two months later, after so many, so many dead ends and uh, hard work, we've managed to pull it through. And uh, we did this piece for Avast that we're really proud of because uh, it was one of our, of course, you know, the biggest clients that we've ever had. The digital world started with a simple, bold idea. To let people connect freely and openly to explore what's possible. It started out small, but over time it grew into something magnificent. Today, over 4.6 billion of us, more than half of the planet, are connected. And every day, all kinds of amazing things are happening. At Avast, we've always believed in the power of the digital world to make our lives richer and better. For over 30 years, Avast has created products and services that defend everyone's right to use the internet safely and with confidence. Now, we protect over 400 million people all around the world every day. And that's just the start, because everyone should feel safe and confident doing whatever they need and want to do, limited only by their imaginations. And as the online world continues to grow, Avast will keep leading the way, protecting and empowering digital citizens today and into the future, so the digital world can remain full of possibilities. Avast is working towards a digital world that works for everyone. As everybody knows, working as a computer designer or doing everything on the computer is a really hard job because you have to move your mouse, you have to move your pen on the tablet. But uh, what really what really is difficult is that you sometimes working on projects don't leave your house, you don't see a sunlight you don't see your friends, and you get the terrible body posture that you see on me. And uh, we've hacked this in a way that we found a way how in the world of motion design, get out of our studio and even travel the world uh, while still doing uh, what, what we love. And that was with that brand before and the uh, World Freestyle Football Association, who, which, which is basically a sport of guys competing with juggling ball and uh, they do tournaments all over the world. And uh, they wanted to have these like visual projections on the stage and have like the animation of the player coming on the stage and then like the spider of like the tournament who advances against who. And the good thing about this is that it has to be created live because you don't know how the tournament progresses, who advances, who, who is uh, against who. 
So we had to be physically present on the stage, which was, which was amazing. We've traveled uh, more than 10 countries uh, with, uh, with this sport. And we've always been there at the venue, you know, and you do this graphics live, which is also kind of adrenaline because, you know, you're like, screen now, you'll finish it. And uh, so let me show you, uh, this is a tournament that took place in Miami. And uh, this was our, our last one. And let me show you a show reel uh, of, uh, of the tournament from Poland. So, uh, what are we doing nowadays? We've been all around the world, we've been into 2D, we've been into 3D, and uh, we, always to do, we always want to have fun, you know? I, I think that's pretty clear, you know? And uh, uh, so, still having fun with uh, all kind of types of projects, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you are aware that every designer, and probably every working uh, person ever, has his own set of terms and kind of shortcuts, you know, that only the chosen ones are, you know, able to truly understand. And call it a slang, I don't know, but over the years, we've uh, actually developed something, you know, in our office that we uh, call Motion House Urban Dictionary. And uh, just to give you a, a, a glimpse of what, our, what is our slang and how we use it, you know, here are two terms. Uh, I will explain. And uh, actually, those are, it, it's a great way to practice 3D, have fun, and uh, it's a brilliant way how to, you know, uh, make your office a, a, bit, a bit nicer. So, like, those uh, two terms are probably one of our favorites, and the first one uh, is uh, translated to uh, greasy fingers. Uh, you can see the explanation there, but you know, to kind of set the set the scene, it's like you're coming to your colleague and uh, watches animation, and if that animation is really cool and smooth, you start to feel that kind of sweat, you know, developing, you know, on your body, you know, and on the fingertips. Yeah, that's 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 kind of the the cool feeling. And on the other hand, if the animation is not right, you feel like you know the dry skin, you know, and stuff. So. Yeah, so that's the greasy fingers one, and the other one is pro, uh, you know, title shows is dentist or dentistry, and uh, we refer that to uh, project files that are usually you know provided uh, to us uh, from a third party or uh, by a different kind of colleague, and you know you know that feeling when you're just open up that file and it's just like you know at the dentist you know we have to fix someone's negligence you know that is there and uh, somehow. So yeah, so that th those are two uh, two terms that we really, really, really like. Uh, there are obviously more, way more. I won't get into those, but uh, if you, you know, if you will be wondering, you know, what 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 does it mean or something, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, we we will gladly gladly uh, tell you. And uh, loops. Who doesn't love loops, right? Loops are everywhere. I'm sure everybody does loops. So yeah, we want to have fun. We're doing loops too. We're not doing those, you know, satisfying ones that too much because, you know, those tend to be boring. But, um, like, for example, this... Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you're the nail, sometimes you're the hammer. Yeah. Or, you know, fixing and... Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> But here's the, here's the part where you should be clapping, but you know, sometimes we want to fix the energy crisis. You know, the cat, bread. You attach a bread to a cat, you know. Always say, bread always, you know, drops on the side. And the uh, cat never drops on the feet, so yeah. There, energy crisis fixed. Or we're just uh, mocking uh, ourselves and uh, Czech culture, you know, by uh, 
doing this kind of loop where uh, we're showing uh, checks, you know, going to a Croatia for a vacation, packed with schnitzels and your own beer, and uh, definitely, most definitely, avoiding the local beer ones. Yeah, we just don't want to taste a foreign beer because we only trust you know, that check beers. I'm sure that you and Austria have awesome beers and that uh, you are protecting them as well. <laughs> Alright, so uh, with these kind of stuff we just wanted to show you that you can always find something in your work that can move you further and maybe, you know, all it takes for you to be a little bit more is just to have fun with everything you do. So, uh, right. And besides of uh, having fun, we also want to save the world. So that was, uh, th th that's the last I, I want to show you. And because we are no doctors or uh, writers or politicians or somebody who can make a big change, then we at least try to help some meaningful organizations throughout the time. And sometimes it works in the way that we want to try some new visual style and then uh, we uh, uh, just find a project where it fits and we can tell a story of a project and uh, many projects like this we've created and it also has, has some impact on uh, let's say uh, let's say better world hopefully and uh, for example here we've partnered up with Postbellum which is a non-profit organization which uh, focuses on uh, collecting the stories of people who've suffered under the total, uh, totalitarian regimes in 20th century and passing those stories on and uh, we had the opportunity to create here uh, uh, together with Isadore uh, a short story uh, based on true events and we took it uh, also with the visual style of uh, the main character, or you want to say because Michael says the interesting stuff. So <laughs> I'll say it, okay? So, 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 uh, so the illustration style was like hand-drawn animation, uh, 12 frames per, per second, and we really wanted to match uh, the style that uh, was found in the diaries of, uh, and illustrations found in the diaries of Zdenko Danesh, who is the main character of uh, this story. So and they were they were provided. He's not dead, you know. Ah, oh, he's he's <laughs> alive. He's alive. Sorry. All right. So and uh, so this is the last thing, uh, last video we want to show you. I want to uh, want to also uh, remind that we are hiring. If you want to move to Brno uh, and speak Czech, so but maybe that's not uh, the requirement. And uh, here is a story uh, about Zdenko Danish. In the 1950s, the pressure of the Soviet Union forced many to run away. So I decided to take my wife on a bike trip to the border. We jumped on our bikes and descended to the stream. Suddenly, I heard a car coming. We quickly rode up the ridge of the Bohemian Forest. No one can outrun a dog, but we had bikes. We pedaled away from the danger, or did we? Welcome to Germany. Riding is freedom, but sometimes we have to ride towards our freedom. All the proceeds from the sale of this jersey will be used to preserve these stories before it's too late. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, interesting thing about this also is that we had 10 days to produce it, so, uh, yeah. It's, uh, and we've managed to, surprisingly, even if it's, when it's so short, uh, we've managed to win uh, some prizes, so we're kind of proud for that one. But mostly that we could help a good cause, you know. All right, so uh, once again, we are hiring, and... Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily, of course, speak Czech, but the relocation would be nice. Brno is great, not that uh, expensive, I believe. And uh, yeah, so feel free to, you know, ask us whatever you want. And, uh, you know, first of all, thank Supik Slovena again for inviting us, uh, amazing venue. And uh, thanks, to, thanks to you that you've shown and uh, been an amazing audience. So thank you very much.
All right, we have some time uh, for a Q&A, if anyone... Oh, thank you. That's a good student. Um, with, like, we have so many different styles uh, you, sh you just showed. How do you manage to like, get into these new styles? Like, you, you have to have like a, a thousand of tries to nail it or something like <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, as the theme of the presentation was, you know, you always have to have fun. And, uh, you know, you won't have fun doing the one thing over and over and over again. So uh, whenever there's a challenge, you know, you, uh, you as actually, as, as was Emma saying, as it was Emma, you know, you have to lie to your clients. And, of course, uh, if they ask you if you can do something, of course, you can do anything, right? But um, it always is a matter of uh, dedication. So uh, if... You know, if you just want to uh, do 2D, you want to do 3D, you want to do hand-drawn animation, anyone can do it. You know, because all it takes is just a couple of hours of tutorials because nowadays the internet has everything and, uh, you know, those softwares, those are just, you know, out of this earth sometimes. Yeah. Uh, that one short thing is that also our teamwork is structured in a way that everybody is kind of generalist. So we don't have like illustrator, only one illustrator who does everything, and only one animator who animates it, but the positions change on the project. So that also gives the var variety. More questions? Yes. Um, my question is, if you have a, a practica or practicum, and what are the requirements for it? And also, uh, what for are you hiring? And, uh, and I had a question about um, America, also USA, if you still work there sometimes, or if someone who you're hiring could be there. Okay, so uh, practica would be an internship. I show up every day, have a coffee, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, so, sorry, I understood if uh, somebody, somebody is there from us, too, in the studio. I think I was... I think I understood the question. So the question was... Uh, yeah, he will elaborate, but... So the question was, if we are... Uh, what position who are we hiring? If we are hiring, like, uh, for the students, like, uh, the practitioners... And uh, if those uh, people are welcome to travel with us to America, if, and if we are ever, you know, working there nowadays also. Yeah, that that, right? that's, uh, we'll be very happy if uh, you contact us, you know, and we always are looking for ways uh, how, how this can work out because we have different deals with every designer at our studio and we are very flexible. We're sometimes also open for students, but it has to be mutual benefit, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so it's always about the conversation. It's not really in a box position. We are looking for this exact set of things, but uh, I'll be very happy if you reach out and we can speak. Yeah. And for the America part of the question before you uh, ask, uh, of course, if you are uh, skilled enough, we will bring you along. Um, yeah, Andreas here. I really admire your company philosophy, which is very much based on fun. And, uh, you know, that's the thing I try to, to achieve with my team and to, to keep on living. And I want to ask you, as, an ent as entrepreneurs, uh, do you have a certain system that enables you keeping doing your own fun projects and not um, getting drawn in the client's requirements and the client's stories, but how do you keep on a daily basis uh, really up on um, yeah, doing your own fun stuff too? Do you have a system for that? Yeah. I, I, I don't think that we have a system for that. I mean, I mean we were, as Radic was saying, we have like, we want to, you know, if, if, if the months are really, really, really packed up with commercial stuff, we always try to, uh, you know, have that 20% of, uh, you know, our team hours, mandates, how you put it, we want to put into our uh, personal stuff. But, you know, uh, the one thing that, uh, 
you know, should be mentioned is that you, it, it, the fun is where you make it and the fun is where you search for it. So if you end within a project, if you, you know, send that to a client, you simply mustn't just, you know, all right, I still have uh, four hours before I can go home or something. And uh, no, uh, and I'll check, you know, emails, maybe Facebook, TikTok or something like that. No, you just have to, you know, uh, browse for uh, anything that, uh, you know, you find uh, interesting and uh, you would love to, you know, do like those loops or, you know, you're doing some urban dictionary stuff or, you know, sometimes it just falls into your lap and uh, some nonprofit organization uh, comes to you and uh, you're lucky enough to help them with their cause. Like for example, we're currently working on um, this uh, foundation, uh, this is a foundation uh, um, that is, you know, providing funds to uh, doctors and research, uh, oh, not, not research, but only for doctors that are, you know, dealing with a uh, child that have been uh, terminally diagnosed. So, yeah, so sometimes, you know, it straight falls out into your lap, but you have to just embrace it and uh, you mustn't be lazy, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, and for the for the uh, let's say company structure type of thing, uh, we've uh, we've just because this was the thing that we've went to do, doing you know ten years ago. So we said like, okay, let's just do it the way we want to do it, you know, and uh, let's not set up any corporate structure. I would call it, and and sometimes the culture I see on the side of our clients, you know, where everybody's on the call nervous, you know, and you just see them shaking. So like, oh my God, how is it to work in that company, you know? And then I looked more into it and I think if you're a small studio, you can afford to not have three floors of management and you can just ditch the processes and just have a lot of feedback. You know? So we talk to each other a lot. We for example, today morning we had our so-called la last Friday, which should happen on the last day of every month, but this is this didn't work out because it's already November. But we have like everybody comes in with whatever, and everybody has a presentation on whatever they want to share after this month. You know, so I want to do this project, I want to do this style, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I want better coffee, I want better this, this, this. So. Uh, just building up on the feedback. I, I believe in Japan they call it uh, Kaizen, you know, like you have small improvements and uh, that's the way we do it. Thanks for your talk first at all. Um, concerning your last video, uh, maybe I didn't get it. Was it a commercial project or a personal project or somewhere in between? Somewhere in between. Uh, was it paid or what was it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about this part, sorry. <laughs> but sometimes it's, it, it's, it's that we meet halfway. That sometimes the client says, okay, I have money for the voiceover, but I don't have like budget for the animation. And we just put 200 hours in and just do it because we see the purpose in there. I believe here it was something like combination. And, uh, but because of the Isadore, the brand uh, that was there is commercial. You can call it that is half commercial, but Postbellum is really strictly a nonprofit organization. So it was, uh, I'm sure there was no money laundering going on there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think like uh, I think like maybe twenty percent of the hours that we've put in were actually you know uh, well were somehow paid, but uh, the Isidore actually was you know uh, launching that another Jersey thing just to finance that uh, you can we can preserve those stories of uh, those people. Yeah. We got the Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have a question too, and um, it's about, so I worked in marketing, and so I know sometimes um, it, it's not fun if you work for clients. Um, so what do you do if like a project turns into not fun? Like what, do you, what I mean, sometimes that just happens, I guess. We just don't answer the phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, he's right. I, no, I mean, uh, all right, yeah, of course, uh, that can happen, you know, we are always dealing with clients, you know, that tend to be, 
you know, a little too sensitive about logo size, logo color and stuff. But, you know, we always, we, we, first of all, we always try to do it our way. We always try to do it our way. We always try to do what we want to do. We always want to have fun. And then they, the more they annoy us, then we, you know, slowly progress towards their, you know, demands because ultimately they are paying for our meals. So you have to do that. But uh, yeah, we are, we're, we're trying to stay strong and just, you know, hold our ground. But we are also looking at the answer right now and she's, uh, the second from the right uh, in, in the upper part and her name is Tina and she's she's rough She's really she she can just she's our project manager and she manages all clients and you know like artists are sensitive you know and uh, don't want to go in the in the in confrontations, but uh, we found out that it's really best to have the shield, the toughest one of us, uh, uh, which uh, is Tina, and uh, she always like manages the clients, and sometimes she has to say no, and sometimes she has to be really rough. That's actually a great point, yeah, that's actually a great point, and last, uh, currently in development, there's a one project that we, you know, obviously we cannot uh, talk about that, but yeah, she's really, really, really keep them, uh, trying to keep them in line, and so, yeah. So, yeah, that's the key. Good, good Tina. project manager, Tina. Tina is the key. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, you mentioned that going into 3D was really important for you to get out of this uh, explainer video things. Um, do you have any styles or techniques you plan on going to do like something even bigger or you think that would be great in the future? Well, I don't know. You know, we've merely, you know, scratched the surface with all those projects that we've done because we even worked on a, a pilot, you know, uh, that was uh, in production of an animated series that was like, you know, to, in 2D. We're never r truly leaving, you know, the 2D space or the 3D space. But, uh, and uh, our colleagues, and even Radek could tell you about, he actually was launching and launched uh, another company called Motion Lab that is, you know, developing this tool to make a personalized videos. So uh, if you're asking about the technology that uh, if, you know, like 2D, 3D, and where does it, you know, go to, We've been even to VR, you know, we've tried to, uh, we were actually working on two projects in virtual reality, some game in virtual reality, but you know, there's just so many things. We don't want to limit ourselves, and so maybe even a feature film can be in, in, in the future, and whether that will be in 3D, 2D, or in the metaverse, who knows. If, All right. If I that think answers your questions. Yeah, I think that was... Right. I think we have uh, time for one more question of those one. No. Okay. Well, thank you so much for um, the an amazing talk. Uh, very, very, very interesting, um, and uh, a lot of good lectures. I think, for, especially for young listeners and also the more experienced ones. Um, a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>